So, this is a first for a moral Oral character quest. In the past, we've only talked about the Puppington family, except for Oral. But guess what? We're still not talking about Oral. Just wait until November, don't worry. Right now, we're talking about Reverend Rod Putty. Reverend Putty is the town's spiritual leader. He provides the sermons in town that everybody has to go hear unless they want to suffer the dreaded penalty of shunning. But just because he's Moralton's main religious leader doesn't really mean that he's objectively a good person. I wouldn't say he's bad, he's not up there with the likes of, say, Coach Stopframe, Ms. Sensodol, or Clay. I'd say that Reverend Putty's in more of a gray area. He's someone with good intentions and overall a good heart. But he lets his personal insecurities and character flaws overcome him a lot, which causes him to make his fair share of mistakes. But before we get into that, let's talk about who Rod Putty is in general. On Sunday mornings, he's an upright, pious, religious man. Someone you can come to when you're feeling lost or guilty and he'll point you right back to the good old God path. Outside of church, though, he's a sad, lonely, desperate man. Because he spent most of his time working in the church and striving for godly things, he's forgotten to build up a social circle. He doesn't really have very many friends or associates outside of church, and he most certainly doesn't have a wife. The reason I point that out in particular is because that's what he does all the time. Putty is cribblingly lonely, and that's his main character trait. This loneliness causes him to become a really distant, bitter man. When he gives his sermons, he seems very kind and compassionate. However, when you come talk to him outside of church, it's exactly the opposite. Take, for example, when Principal Fakie's having trouble with his marriage because he accidentally keeps cheating on his wife with Nurse Bendy. And yes, those are big air quotes around accidentally, and I hope the editor put that on the screen, but we'll talk more about that when we get to Principal Fakey, because yes, we're gonna talk about him too. Here, Putty lets his jealousy control him. He's not here to help Principal Fakey, he's not here to set him right. All he's gonna do is sit in the repressional and just gripe about how Principal Fakey's life is so much better than his. He's got a wife and a mistress when he, a perfectly amazing amazing, handsome, talented, thoughtful, nice guy has absolutely nobody. And yes, it's true, Rod Putty is in fact a nice guy. I mean, have you seen how he tries to pick up women, especially his own daughter? Would you like to meet for lunch sometime? Sure, I could eat. How's now? Now's a little soon. No, I, I mean, I mean tomorrow. Now, now. What is now? Now, I, that's ridiculous. I didn't, I don't even know what now means. Is now even a word? Let me take it for a little test drive. Now, 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 now. <laughs> nope, doesn't mean a thing. Tomorrow. And of course, when he gets rejected, he gets all sulky. But in this case, it's for a different reason, but more on that in a bit. Putty is a godly man, and he is dedicated to his craft. But that comes with a limit. Just like a lot of people in Moralton, he's willing to throw every single one of his Christian values aside in order to get what he wants. Take, for example, the episode Presence for God. He has sex with three different hookers just because, hey, he's gotta get that virgin rage out somehow. That sounded a lot more Chris chan -y than I originally thought it would, but oh well, moving on. It just goes to show that even the most supposedly godly men in all of the city don't really have that strong of a connection to their biblical values. In fact, Oral is probably a better pastor than he is. So obviously, given the fact that he's a really desperate guy, he'll take any woman that comes to him, right? Nope. Because in addition to being a nice guy, Reverend Putty's also a choosing beggar. He claims that he just wants any woman and he wants to just settle down and have a family and be just like Clay and Blaberta, having that happy, perfect, loving marriage. Poor guy. If only he knew. There is one woman in Moralton that's very interested in Reverend Putty. It's the recently divorced Florence Papermouth. She is absolutely obsessed with Putty and everything he says. She is basically his number one fan. But does Reverend Putty ever consider going out with her? Nope. She's too big for him, so he decides to pass her by. Especially when it comes to her roommate and sort of friend, it's hard to explain, Dottie. Since Dottie's more conventionally attractive, Reverend Putty will automatically go after her. Even though, if you really sat down to think about it, Dottie is a really nasty and selfish person and Florence would give anyone the shirt off her back. But that doesn't matter to him because all he really wants is short-term gratification. He might try to convince himself or others that he wants the big picture marriage thing, and maybe deep down he does, but when it comes to being in the heat of the moment or the possibility of actually having a chance with a girl, 
He'll think with his lower half before his upper half, and that tends to ruin everything. It takes away all of his happiness in the episode Sundays. We get to see just how long Florence has been going after Reverend Putty. And of course, whenever she shows interest, he always turns her down and whenever Dottie's near, clearly shows favoritism towards her. But it's Florence that he gets into bed with one night, until he screams Dottie's name. We're gonna touch on this moment more in Florence and Dottie's character quests, but for Reverend Putty, he knows he royally screwed up. I know a lot of you haven't read the Narcissism script yet, and don't worry, our production of that animatic is still going according to plan, but Putty eventually realizes that deep down, he actually does love Florence, and he loves her for the inside traits, not the outside, even though according to the creator, she was eventually gonna lose weight before they got together, but yeah, oh well. This was going to be the conclusion of Putty's arc. He was going to stop viewing people with such a superficial lens. We were going to see this the most strongly with Florence. By actually getting to know her and thinking more about his connection with her, he realizes that she's the one he wants to be with, not someone as vapid as Dottie. And who knows, this might have ended up leading him to become a better reverend. But that's kind of speculation at this point. It's a shame that we never really got a whole lot of it though. The most we got was his relationship with his daughter, Stephanie. Because yes, he does have a daughter. So let's discuss that, why don't we? Because that's a really important part of Putty's growth. In the episode Be Fruitful and Multiply, Oral finally convinces his friend Stephanie to come to church with him, but Stephanie doesn't want to go because she wants to learn more about God. She wants to learn more about Rod. See, see what, I, see what I did there? As it turns out, Rod Putty is actually her father, but he has no idea. They meet up together and Putty thinks that this is a date because of course he does, it's Reverend Putty, come on. And there he shows just how inept he is at talking with women. And he's all excited to talk to her and probably even more until he realizes, surprise, Stephanie's his daughter. But that's impossible because he's a virgin. Except what happened was that this crazy woman named Gladys Foamwire ended up sneaking into Reverend Putty's house, taking his, uh, sample from his Lonely Night tissues, and ended up conceiving a daughter through that said sample. And Putty doesn't take this well at all. Not because his daughter is quote-unquote godless and sinful, not because she runs the local sex shop in Moralton, no, because he got a daughter without getting to enjoy creating her. He feels like he got robbed of a sexual experience, and that's why he wants nothing to do with her at all. Once again, this shows just how narrow Reverend Putty's view really is. This could be a cure to his loneliness, although not really in the way that he originally thought or wanted, but he'd finally be able to have a companion, someone he could talk to when he feels lonely or someone to possibly give him advice. Given that he's the go-to religious leader of the town, who's gonna be there to help him when he's in trouble? But no, that's not what he wants, so he decides to cut her out. Until he does a little bit more thinking and decides, yeah, I'll give her a shot. Let's start a father-daughter bond. And despite the fact that Stephanie is basically the opposite of what the people of Moralton view as a good person, they get along really well. And Putty's able to put aside his long-standing homophobia for the sake of his daughter. Back when Stephanie was in high school, she had a crush on Doey's future your mother, Kim. But Kim basically treated it all like a giant joke. Stephanie ended up getting her heart broken and when Putty discussed it with her years later, he revealed that he felt bad for her that day because he could tell that Kim never really cared about her. Of course, if anybody heard him say that, he would be immediately stripped of his post, but that doesn't matter. He wants to show his daughter that he cares about her regardless of what anybody else says, and at the end of the day just wants her to be safe and happy. Not settle for a woman who would treat her like a gigantic joke. This is the first instance where Reverend Putty's heart ends up overpowering his flesh. He's finally getting in touch with his emotions and therefore actually helping somebody. He's not just standing up at the pulpit going, oh yes, this is what you must do. And now watch as I immediately don't do that. But please ignore that because I'm such a great religious leader. Please date me. Who knows? Maybe this is how he would have been by the end of the series had it actually gotten completed. But as it stands, it's kind of implied. Kind of like what we discussed with Shapey and Block and their progression. It's more left to context clues and subtle changes to their personality as time goes on. Putty's kind of the same way. He did his job well enough, and basically in Moralton, that's all that can be expected of somebody. But then when he got out of the church, the reverend part of him was gone. And instead, he became a bitter, angry loner. But as time went on, some very important people would get introduced to his life. While at first he wouldn't want anything to do with them, he would slowly but surely let them into his life, 
and change him for the better. This shows that Reverend Putty isn't a lost cause. You look at someone like, say, Clay or Bliberta and say, yeah, they're too far gone. They've done so many terrible things and have been so damaged in their past that they're basically beyond saving. You look at someone like Coach Stoffram and go, yeah, he's done so many awful things and even his change at the end was only caused by him losing what was close to him and what he valued most. And do I even need to say anything about Censored All? This is why I don't think Putty's a bad guy. His sermons may be lip service sometimes and he doesn't go the extra mile for the people in his congregation, but deep down, despite all his faults, He's mostly a good person. And that's more that can be said about the rest of the town, let me tell you. So that's Reverend Putty, a lonely man who lets his weaknesses get the better of him until he sinks so low that he decides to take matters into his own hands and turn his life around, even if we didn't get to see it. Well, folks, thanks for watching the video. What'd you guys think? What do you think of Reverend Putty? Comment below and let us know because we're always excited to hear what you guys have to say. Real quick, I... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not gonna do that to you guys again. Anyway, here are the Patreon producers. Leaf Razor, Valkaria, Whoopdo, Michaela Bellamy, Amdi the Dude, Blackjack, Nightingale Wednesday Nightmare, Unkale, and Manny Paredes. Thank you all so much for your support, and if you would also like your name read at the end of every video of ours, then please consider donating to the Patreon. There's a link down below. We've said it in pretty much every video at this point. Well, almost every video and now it's time for the comment of the day courtesy of kylogram i've played and watched v3 like four times and i only just remembered kaede having a twin was a thing when you said it yep if you don't know it's a very out of the blue clue much later in the game it does nothing to progress the story kaede is already dead at that point why bother this was just a really funny comment uh so yeah and if you want me to say something funny here, um, especially in, in context with the video, well, may I, I don't know. Uh, the tissue bucket is a very disturbing concept.